Hi, man, Joel Strong, and welcome to back of his Teardown Lab. Today, we're continuing our work on the ZX81. We are going to upgrade its 1K of internal RAM to 16K. There are 16K RAM packs available for this, but my experience from childhood wasn't good because you could be typing in a big old program, hit a key, and that jarring motion would cause a crash. We're going to be doing that by adding one of these, and this is a 32K RAM chip, but we're only going to be using half the addressable space because, one, we don't have software necessarily that's going to use that additional space up to 32K, and two, we'd require extra components, and frankly, I don't think it's worth doing right now. I saved you the pain of having to watch me unscrew this. Now I had a look on the internet, timemathsoftware.co.uk had a really good project blog of how they've done it on this board and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So what I'm going to do is remove these two existing memory chips here. I'm going to put my one in this socketed position. Unfortunately the board isn't configured for the additional address lines needed to access the 16K but that's fine because you can access those via these diodes here and by modifying one of the jumpers. So we're going to make a reversible modification by hooking those up and how we're going to do that as well rather than cut PCB tracks um, we're going to bend these legs up so that's why there's wires going to and from here because we're going to attach the wires straight to these pins here on this chip. Sometimes it's safer to use your side cutters and cut all the legs of these chips remove them and then clean the holes up separately but I'm going to have a go I'm going to have a go to see if we can use a solder sucker to remove them so we're just going to start at the beginning and work our way to the end. I'm using this quite nifty Japanese engineering solder sucker. And I'm going to work my way through. It's doing a pretty good job, I have to say. Those two are looking pretty clear. And that should be the last one. We've got one up here that looks like it's still got a bit in there. If that happens to you, don't worry. Just add a little bit of extra solder. And then repeat the process. Suck that out. Should be good. The chip's not quite loose because I'm turning it over. I can see there is some additional solder here. Going to be keeping those in. So I've got some solder braid. I'm going to try that. Just remove any excess using it. I'm going to be a little bit ginger to see if this chip has shown any signs of ah, wanting to lift. It is. Oh, oh, oh. Now be very gentle, you don't want to lift any traces off your PCB and if, if, if in doubt just stop, rewind, apply more solder, suck it off again, get your braid. I think we're okay, it's starting to come up, oh, we're halfway out, ah, there we are and the PCB is looking good. And actually the chip's okay so we can put that in a box of spares. I repeated it for the second chip and now that's out of the way. Put it over there. We need to remove the solder locking the holes where the socket's going to go. So to do this, it's really the same process again, but the difference being I'm actually going to add additional solder to there to tin them up because they haven't been tinned for decades and this is going to give the solder sucker a lot more to purchase on. Now all the argy bargies out of the way, we can take our turned pin socket and you can choose whichever socket type technology you like. I like the turned pin. I know other people don't. I don't plan on taking the chip in and out too many times beyond this. And you can start soldering it in. And I'm holding the solder and the socket and the PCB in one hand. While I just tack the opposite corners. 
and that will keep everything in the right place. I'm just going to check that. Yep, yeah, that looks fine. That looks better than factory, I'm sure. We're going to zoom in now. We can have a nice look at how we're going to solve these up. And we're really just going to move whichever direction you like, right to left, left to right, top to bottom, and solder those pins. And I'm using it as an opportunity as well while I'm doing this to look at the immediate surrounding pins and see if I've damaged anything. So far it looks all right. There's a little bit of the solder resist seems to have come off in some places, but that's fine. We're talking about something that's several decades old at this point. But as long as there's no bridges, no cut tracks, no ripped tracks, you'll be okay. And we're done. Now's the time to bend the legs up on the new chip. Now before we do this though, what I would recommend is just test fitting it because you're still going to have to bend. Often you have to bend the pin so they're the right alignment. And it's easier to do that to by bending a whole row at a time on the edge of your bench like that. That's getting them a bit straighter, a bit more parallel. And I'm going to just hover them over the turn pins or the socket see if they want to go in and they pretty much do I'd say actually that's not far off it I might just give it just a kiss more but be careful you don't put too much pressure and flip the chip over and bend all the pins that's often a nightmare so that's as if you're going to install it normally but now we're going to bend the pins up that we that we need out of the way so the first one is pin one here and I'm going to just tackle that using these quite stubby tweezers whatever tool you've got that might do it probably will work I mean I'm using this just because it's a bit blunter than my standard tweezers in fact there you can see it's starting to kick the pin out a little bit too much so I might shift to something else I'm going to use these forceps now that I've made that initial bend because I think these will do a better job of bringing them up and there we go we're actually at 90 degrees now that's fine so that's pin one done then we need, uh, so pin 1 is address line 11, and then we need to attack address line 10, which is pin 21. So count down from the top edge, so you've got 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which is you expect on a 28 pin uh, package, and then flip it over. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And in fact, I could make a little mark on it there, if I can, just a touch. Then we want 23 and 26. Last one being bent. The snip, so there you go. You can see that there. And you've got kind of options here. I feel that I want to chop off the little extension parts of the leg, so I'm going to just take my side cutters. And I hope I've got the right pins here. There's no going back. Fortunately, this chip wasn't too expensive. It was on eBay for about three pounds. The socket's something similar. So you're looking at a pretty reasonable upgrade. So I'm aligning it now. Something like that. And I'm going to push those straight in. Oh, no, no. And you want to avoid that. You want to avoid a pin not going in. Jumper LK2 needs to be closed. I'm not going through the effort of cleaning out the pin holes and putting in a wire that way. I'm just going to surface mount that because it's easy enough to do. So I've got a little piece of component leg from an old resistor or diode or similar. I'm just going to place it in. like that. Just tidy up a touch. There we go. So that's going to be absolutely fine. Now we get our Kynar wire and we make our little jumper wires. I pre-tinned the pins on the socket. You could see that if you look closely and squint. And unfortunately I couldn't get to the base of the diode easily because they're off the PCB. They're actually floating off the PCB rather than pushed up to it, which is fine. So I've actually just tinned the ends of the diode. So we're going to be a bit of a floaty a floaty fix here. I've just trimmed 
a little bit of the end of the insulation off this piece of kynar. Now, any wire should do, really. I don't think it should be a problem. Any wire should do. And um, because I pre tinned the IC, it's just very easy just to dab that in there. Little piece of solder and it's fixed. And I know it looks a bit tiny on the camera, so I'll zoom in in a moment. So what I like to do then is try to figure out a route. So we're going to this D1, this first die, and you can see it says D1 nice and clearly on it. So I'm going to see if I could just push this down. And that take me somewhere like that. I'm just going to trim the end. Kind of can be a little bit fiddly, but it's not too bad. If you do have a nice wire stripper that you can adjust right down to have the tiniest hole in it, like mine, because it uses this nut in the handle, Make sure you mark it only for Kynar, because if you get a dent in it from trying to bite something you shouldn't, it will never cut the Kynar, never strip the Kynar, rather, properly again. I'm going to take my tweezers now, and I'm just going to tack it onto D1, which is that first diode there. I just have to put a little bit of a dog leg in it to get it in there. That's it tacked. If I just zoom out a tiny bit, I can work out if there's a nice route for it. And I think we can come straight down from that pin, wrap it around. Puts, it's like a 3D puzzle, this. You can see there, you could do a pretty good job. It's out of the way, it's not going to interfere with anything. And we'll do the same for the other dress lines. So we've got pins 21, 23, and 26, and they go to diodes D2, D3, and D5, respectively. And they represent finally all the address lines. You've got address line 10, 11, 12, and 13. And that should be all we need. At the end of the story, it should look a little bit like this. We've got our Kynar wires coming through and just about to see them, they're attached to the end of those diodes. We've got that jumper link there, that's all you need. So if you follow this step by step, it should work. However, I have to admit, I haven't plugged this in yet, so it might not work and uh, might go kaboom. While I'm here though, I do hear that the ULA gets rather hot. So I think I've only got a tiny little heat sink, but why don't we just give it the benefit of that little heat sink anyway. They're just self-adhesive and you can pop them off if you don't want it. And I'm gonna put another one on the main CPU because why not? With that powerhouse running, I can imagine this thing is kicking off a lot of CPU heat. Keyboard back on, nice. It's all hooked up so this is the moment of truth where I'm gonna push the power jack in. It came on and there was a little bit of a delay. Someone said that it does take a little bit longer when you have the additional memory. So maybe there's a memory check. However, there is a piece of code you can type in to test the memory. On the screen, you see a test program. This reports back to you the address of the top of the memory. So when we run this, we expect it to say 32K because the program ROM of a ZX81 occupies the first 16K of memory address space. So let's hit run and see what happens. And there you have it, the 32K. So our 16K upgrade has worked. You might think this concludes our ZX81 adventure, but not quite. If you turn it over, you'll notice we're missing the feet. And I think we're not gonna go into this machine that much more in the future. So I think we can afford to put on some of these brand new feet that were sent to me by ZX Renew. Ooh. So they come off like that. Look, you can see they have that adhesive layer. I don't want to rip the adhesive layer off the rubber. Let's pop them on. This should stop it skitting off the desk, because sometimes I've noticed the weight of the cable seems to just bring it off the desk. I'm almost tempted to look out for a printer. I remember when I had one of these, I had this little printer that would print in a kind of a tin foily, silvery looking paper. And that would be marvelous to try again. Oh yeah, look at that. That is a lot more grip than I remember these ever having. 
Thanks again for watching my video on this. Hopefully it's been informative for you and you're going to do something with your ZX81. If you've got any more ideas for me, please pop them down below and we might revisit it in a future episode. As ever, thank you for watching. <laughs>